Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here, checking out the series. I do hope you hit the subscribe button so you can keep up with all the interviews that I put out every single week. In fact, it's uh, three new interviews every week, a new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, which makes this a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover some new ones as well. Uh, all the usual spots, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, WFPK.org, or of course, right here on YouTube for the video versions. I'm Kyle Meredith. Today, my guest, Jamie Campbell Bauer. Uh, Jamie has uh, he's been long been an actor and a musician, and that's what we're going to talk about. You know, Jamie comes from uh, the world of Harry Potter. He's been in Twilight, and now he is in Stranger Things as one of the greatest characters, as far as I'm concerned, of the series, and one of my favorite, uh, uh, what do you what do you call this? Uh, horror characters, sci-fi characters of all time. Uh, anyway, uh, spoilers abound in this interview. I will say that, uh, in, in, in as we get to talk about Stranger Things, but but we also get to talk about his music. Uh, he went solo back in uh, in 2020 after being in the band Counterfeit for a few years and has been released in just a few tracks. And we've got uh, brand new songs. In fact, he's done uh, the old, um, I don't know if we call it standard, but uh, but Run On, um, which uh, Odetta had kind of popularized, Moby had done in the 90s, Johnny Cash had done in the, uh, in the 2000s. And now Jamie has put his own spin on this one. And it is, it is, it is interesting. It is dark and it is creepy in all the best ways. And it's got a B-side called The Devil and Me, which uh, is one of his songs. So we get to talk about his music and where it's going and the world that he's building out of all of this, too. So I'm so excited to do this. Let's jump into it. It's Kyle Meredith with Jamie Campbell Bauer. So new music, first off, I, I know there's a lot. We'll start with the music because uh, you, you released that on the same day, I think, as the, as the, the new Stranger Things came out. And But what? Like the story of you, I guess for anybody who doesn't know, like music speaking, not your acting side, but you know, you were in the band Counterfeit. I guess they broke up uh, around the time of the, the beginning of the pandemic, and that opens the opportunity for you to do uh, a solo run. Did you want it to be the same thing, or did it, you automatically say, "Okay, now this is going to be something different"? I I didn't go into it wanting it to be anything i mean at the end of counterfeit i'm I'm gonna be like super honest and open with you like at the end of counterfeit um i think we all felt like we'd lost a bit of the dna that made that uh project and that artistic project what it was you know i made that first record and we made that first record i'd just gotten sober and I um, was filled with emotion and rage. And the thing that came out of me was this very glossy, daggery guitar sound. And it was the and it was like, great, this is super. I'm just going to let this all go and let this all out. And then you know, as, as counterfeit developed and as things, you know, as we were offered more opportunities, we were still very young in our musical journey that we didn't know that we could say no to things. And we said yes to too many things. Um, and so by the end of it, I think we all felt that, you know, that, that, that we'd lost a part of what made it real for us and so for me it was about yes continuing because I love art and I love music but taking a step back and going well what is it that I want to talk about what is it that I want to say what is it that I believe in um and what are my what are my references you know like and who am I making this for who am I, am I fucking making this for somebody else or am I making this for myself? Like, oh, I'm making this for myself. Oh, okay, great. Well, then the doors are blown wide open because I don't have to fucking worry. Um, so, you know, those first two things that, that, that I put out, start the fire and, and paralyzed, you know, they came at this very, very, very sensitive, emotionally cut open time. And um, 
and there there was a real beauty to that um and i was very i was in a pro i was in a place of mass surrender and i want to stay in that place of mass surrender for as long as possible <laughs> um and then with with run on and with devil and me you know we have in the bag a, a lot of material that we're yet to put out and stuff that's still in a process um but run on was like it was one of these things that was just like in a, it was like an immediacy to it there was like oh no we need to do this like now this would be great and recently i've been listening to a lot of you know a, a, a lot of kind of um gospel and uh you know leonard cohen he, you know in that sort of world and i was like well i wanted to try this this sounds great this this looks like a lot of fun let's let's do it you know and this song is you know song's been around forever everyone's covered it you know manson's covered it cash covered it you know it's like it's everywhere um but fuck it why not um and mikey demas and aria goggin aria's on drums and mikey's on lead guitar come from a band called skin dread um, they've got their own side project thing that they're doing under the name King Sugar, but their, their predominant work comes from a band called Skin Dread, who are, you know, very popular. And, and it, I wanted there to be this, I want anything that I do now musically to feel very organic, um, particularly with like instruments. Mm -hmm. I want there to be, I want it to be pretty much all in one take if 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 it can be done if it can't be i'll take five minutes i'll be a bit disappointed and then we'll <laughs> go again um so to have two really talented musicians who are open and receptive to the idea which doesn't happen often often anymore in in in, in popular music but in music in general i mean in the music that's sort of like mass consumed we, we're not really experiencing it much anymore in terms of the live element so I'm always now very conscious of trying to make sure that that's happening all the time because I can hear an edit and I don't want to hear a fucking edit. I don't care. Like I'd rather it be nasty and crappy and feely than perfect and shiny and emotionless. Um, so yeah, that, you know, the, the, the counterfeit ended and started the solo project and I'm, I'm, you know, I, I've worked both alone and with one other writer now on the solo project and, where um, I'm developing the world and developing the story. And for me, like music is, it, music's not just it, you know, like my, my goal as an artist is to never write a song or record a song and put it on Spotify. Like my, my goal is to like constantly try and make everything around that, around the art, a story and, um, and, and bring people into the world that I have in my head. Um, so, you know, a lot of the music stuff that I'm doing now is very much based on Dante's Inferno and the Nine Circles of Hell, um, which I know, you know, has been done. You know, King Woman did that on, 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 on her last record, but uh, it's, it's something that very much fascinates me and the idea of something beyond our world. So yeah, I'll shut up now because I'm probably covering a few questions that you've got and, I, and I'll, I'll shut up before I just blow the whole thing. <laughs> I, I love everything you said right there. I mean, all of my favorite artists, my, my, my most favorite artists are essentially world builders uh, within their song. You know, even I, I had started to wonder, I didn't know it was that far that you were that far in, into the development of this, you know, but even when you look at just this new single run on, you know, we can throw the parenthetical title there of God's going to cut you down. And when you've got God's, gonna cut you down and the devil and me it's like oh well look at that it's, you know it's see there's even a god up top and a devil on you know, it, you know you're already given us this opportunity you know to peel off the uh the onion skin you know to, to start looking start looking in there so you know you were already yeah obviously leading into my next question of is this leading to an album and it, it, as it sounds like it is it, are you thinking of it like an album like that? It, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. I 
I'm leaving it very much at the moment open to whatever is guiding me. <laughs> like I have, I have, I probably have overall like 40 tracks that I'd be happy to track. Um, but, uh, but only probably a handful at this point in time that would be cohesive on an album. Um, and so I don't know. I, I think my plan is, is to just continue to make, continue to bring people into the world more, continue to make the visual aspects, continue to tell the story. And if at some point that creates an album, then fantastic. But equally now, if not, fine. You know, we're fortunate now. You know, I love Pornography by The Cure, right? Mm. I absolutely adore that record and the depths in which that band went to to make that album is really fascinating to me. Um, and they, you know, they were fortunate because they were in one space for one, you know, extended period of time and able to make a body of work about that period of time. You know, now, now the world is constantly shifting. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it requires a bit more attention to stay focused um, and to be in that world. Um, but yeah, I, I, I definitely have a handful, if not more, of songs that could constitute as an album. But realistically, I think I just want to continue to 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 create and to make and to and to put out and you know music's a very interesting thing in in the sense that what we're capturing as you know but what 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 was captured on record and what's captured through a microphone is effectively like a camera it's capturing a specific period in time it's capturing a specific vibration mm. within the room the sound frequency the the, the sound wave is vibrating at a certain level and it vibrates from within us too, right? So we're all vibrating at a frequency. So the idea of making sure that whenever one is in that creative space, that there's a level of like maintaining and understanding and, um, and being gentle with, with, with that and honoring that is really important and it doesn't always happen it doesn't always happen you're not always it's not always going to be perfect um but the times that it is man like oh boy you know there are singers that on record that you know that there are singers that you know like technically they're not opera singers but they're on record doing something that is like holy shit like i feel this to my very core and that's what I'm always after, is trying to feel something to its very, very core. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard sometimes, particularly as a young artist, particularly as a young artist, because you have to show people that they can trust you enough to be in charge of that room, to be in charge, to, 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 like, to, to, for everyone to just know that this is, it's okay, it's fine, don't worry. Um, I don't need a loud producer. I need a quiet, gentle producer who will stop me from being fucking loud, if anything. <laughs> well, let me ask you, you know, as you talk about being an artist overall, not just a musician, not just an actor, but the way it all plays together, you know, uh, easy, easy parallel here. This type of music, what we're seeing on the screen on Stranger Things, I got to tell you, by the way, side note, what you've done here is instantly become one of my all-time favorite characters ever. It's just so good. When you're living inside the head of a character like that, do you use these moments to then uh, have that play out within the songs? Because I don't know how much, you know, what is this uh, biographical, you know, to a certain degree and how much is it like biographical of something that we're seeing on screen already in a, in a fictional way? 
uh, I, 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 it's, I think the world works in incredibly mysterious ways and artistically, you know, I, I didn't join Stranger Things thinking, oh, I want to play this part now. This part appeared to me and I was fortunate enough to be given the opportunity and it just so happens to coincide with these beliefs and these experiences that I'm having. And there's a lot to be said for that. You can't, you can't close your mind off to those things. You have to be open. Um, so, you know, they, they, they're all, they're all experiences happening, happening at the same time. Um, yeah. 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 Um, and I hope you don't mind, cause I do want to ask a little bit about that character too, because it's just so good. And, and I do find that if like, how did you find the voice? For Vecna, because I feel like there's got to be some similarities in what you're doing with with the music, uh, because there's a musicality to it, I guess, is what I'm saying. There is absolutely a musicality to it. Yeah. No. Well done. Um, I, I think um, when I first started looking for Vecna's voice, I was very like it was quite nasally. It was placed, you know, in the soft palette up the top. It, it, it was the idea of what a monster voice should be. Um, and I was saying, no, this isn't working. This doesn't work for me. I don't, it, I don't believe this. I don't feel it enough. We'll keep going and you'll figure it out. So then it was about relaxing, letting the larynx open, letting the diaphragm do the work that it needs to do, knowing the character well enough to be able to let whatever's inside out. So I would do vocal exercises and vocal warm-ups, you know, humming whilst gently tapping the diaphragm to kind of release everything and warm everything up. And you can hear now, like, when I'm super relaxed, my voice is much deeper. And when I'm not super relaxed, my voice is much more up here. Um, and so and but in saying that obviously with Henry with one the way he's interacting with with Millie you know he's dealing with a child and when we deal with children there is that sort of like there's that sort of oh my god look at the baby the baby's beautiful oh I love it. you know and I was like well that obviously makes perfect sense like that's great but for Vecna I was like I've got to be more you know down here in this register um and when we're in that register when I'm in that register it's often when I'm it's often when I'm being most truthful. Yeah. When I'm most connected. Yeah. That's interesting because I think that says everything about the characters in themselves. I was I was wondering if, you know, that you kept the human side of your character in mind when portraying the, the less humans at whatever Vecna is. Um, you know, if, <laughs> if, if, if that's in there. Uh, it's really interesting about just the levels of comfort and what the voice says too. Yeah, yeah, and there's always there has to be a level of humanity, I think, in in Vecna as as you know as he's gotten, you know, as he's been turned into this nasty piece of you know <laughs> nasty piece of vine. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a it's a continuation of his experience. You know, Henry Henry's experience and his belief system is very much that the world is a lie, that people present a false version of themselves. Um, and that everyone has a secret and some sort of guilt. And then Vecna still believes that I'm still Henry underneath there. You know, I still believe that, but also I've now got this like deep resentment for this person that has sent me to hell, mm. you know, which, you know, which is a fine place to go to if you want to go, but you didn't want to go at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Easily put. I know we're short on time here. Um, you know, I wrap up with the obvious turnaround here, too, because uh, the music plays such an important part of that series with Stranger Things, uh, especially in this episode as we get Kate Bush, who's, thank God, you know, we have a new generation now discovering the brilliance of Kate Bush on top of this. But, um, you know, the, the uh, with the way it goes with the favorite songs, I mean, uh, I guess I wrap this back around to what you were saying at the beginning is when you're thinking about the artists, you know, that, that you're thinking about when you're making your music, like what's, what's, what's going to be the headphone song for you at this point? Well, I'm going to answer this in twofold. I'm going to actually, I'm going to answer this in threefold for you. Um, because we're talking about music and because music is obviously so deeply important to both of us. 
when I was prepping for Vecna to get into Vecna, I would use a lot of bands like Sano, Carpathian Forest, Dark Throne, Mayhem, like a lot of black metal kind of stuff that I just really latched onto and, and thought, wow, this is great. Like there's also something about the sensitivity and, and the way black metal is made in their belief system, which I really fucking vibe with. Like, I just think it's so fucking right on as an art, like, hell yeah, why not? Um, so that, that was, uh, that was Vecna, that was Vecna getting into Vecna, uh, escaping Vecna. Unfortunately, I wish we'd done our show, your show first, because I, I've, I've answered this question a few times now and I have to toe, I have to say the same thing that I've already said. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm a huge fan of placebo. I, mm-hmm. I bought placebo, um, and obviously placebo covered Kate Bush is running up that hill um, sometime in, I don't know, I guess it must have been late 90s, early 2000s. Um, and so I would go with that, you know, I, I just, you know, I, why not stick to the theme that's already in the show, but the song is so beautiful. We love Kate Bush, we stand Kate Bush, but, you know, I've, I've already gone there. So I've got to say that again. Or if I'm being really naughty, as somebody wanted me to be naughty, they were like, what would you pick? I was like, I know, fucking uh, Miley Cyrus is party in the usa or something but it's like that <laughs> by the way the new placebo they still got it it's i was so hoping good. Oh, it's so good it's, it's so good it's really good yeah, yeah i really like it and they obviously they just supported my chem in england as well and you know i wasn't there and i assume you weren't either which is mm-hmm. devastating mm-hmm. what a fucking show what yeah. a show yeah <laughs> Yeah, I'm hoping to still have them on my on the series. It's the conversations ongoing, but uh, it's it's sort of like a bucket list interviews right there. So yeah, it's mm, one of these days. Uh, Jamie, I've become such a fan so quickly, and uh, and the music too. What you got going, and especially what you're talking about with where you're going with it and the world building, uh, I'm in. Uh, thank you so much for doing what you're doing and uh, and taking the time to talk about it. Thank you very much for your time and thank you for allowing me to talk about it. I appreciate you. My thanks, Jamie Campbell Bauer. Uh, The new single is out with Run On. Of course, Stranger Things season four is also out there. Uh, Big thanks to Jamie and a big thanks to you as well for checking out the uh, the episode here in this series. Hit that subscribe button before you get out. Again, uh, three new interviews every single week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, at Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, uh, or here on YouTube for the video versions. Then after that, head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres and music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence, they've got your music and film news, and you can also find me on the social media spots. I'm mostly Twitter, but also Facebook and Instagram, all three of them at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.